Deborah was talking about in her prayer request. Um, I I want um, there, before before we read the text, church. Th there's something we're missing. There's something we're missing. There's something we're missing uh, when it comes to people that are suffering uh, with um, a spirit of suicide uh, or a, a, a spirit of sorrow. Um, we're, we're not, we're, something's not, uh, forgive me, forgive my vernacular, something's not jiving. Because people are still dealing with this, and even within the confines of the church, people are dealing with depression, people are dealing with oppression, um, and I believe the Lord wants us to have discernment, yes, but I believe the Lord is calling for a people that'll stand up in the authority in which they have been placed Amen. in the finished work of Christ. Amen. I mean, and not in pride and not in being a show, show off and not in, you know, to be seen, hey, you need to go let this man or this woman pray for you to lift up. Because see, God always, when that happens, God, God has to tear it down because no flesh will glory in the sight of the Lord. But on the other hand, I believe that the Bible, the Bible is replete with people that have been delivered from these type of things. Now, do we call it the flesh? Is it, an, is it the flesh? Is it um, a spirit? Is it a demon spirit? I don't know. I don't know, but I, I do know this. I do know this, that the scripture, the scripture bears out that there's all kinds of spirits in the word of God. As a matter of fact, the scripture says even test the spirits or try the spirits to see that whether they're of God. And as I was meditating on that, and I was meditating on things in my own life. And if I have to be the test case, I'll, I'll be it, for example's sake. But this, uh, this spirit of, of, it just seems like there's a spirit of heaviness. And then as I began to, I began to, to think about that, the spirit of heaviness, I said, hey, that's in the Bible. And look at Isaiah chapter number 61. In this um, great prophecy of the Old Testament uh, concerning the advents or the coming as a matter of fact, in prophet, from a prophecy aspect, it covers the first and the second coming. But I want us to look uh, in the first four verses here. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 61, many of you have heard this and read this uh, down through the years. And, and before we read it, I also want you to remember, remember that in Luke chapter 4, the Lord started his ministry by standing up in the synagogue and, and actually reading or quoting what he wrote <laughs> 700 years earlier. So listen to what the Lord said. This is Jesus. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Well, you could stop right there. 
you could run around the block a couple times right there. See, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but if you're in Christ, the Spirit of the Lord is on you. Now, you may not acknowledge it. You may not even want it. But if you're in Christ, the Spirit of the Lord is on you. And not only on you, the Spirit of the Lord is in you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, he said, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Zion meaning his people, this Jerusalem, this Israel, this Mount Zion, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them, listen, beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. And here it is, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build up the old wastes, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they will repair the waste cities. And listen, the last phrase, the desolations of many generations. Wow, how powerful is that? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for allowing, Lord, us to revisit this text. And Lord, I pray, Lord, as, as Lord, I'm trying, Lord, to lend myself, Lord, over to your spirit. And Lord, not to box you in to any kind of formality, not to box you in in any way. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord, that you will show us, Lord, what to do. Lord, I pray that you'll not only show us what to do, you'll show us how to do it. And when you show us what to do and show us how to do it, God, we'll know, we know that you'll give us the resources to do it with. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you so much. Lord, I pray, Lord, that this word, even on this Wednesday night, would help someone that is seeking deliverance and freedom, Lord, for something in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I was looking at this phrase, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I, I've been asking the Lord to, to give me a greater discernment to know how to move forward and, and the what to do, the how to do. And I probably already know. I'm just, I, I think, I don't know whether I'm waiting on him or he's waiting on me. You ever been that way? Um, but the issue, issue with the spirit world, the issue with spirits, and I began to, to think about that. I said, Lord, uh, and we talk about deliverance ministry and we've heard about that. And, and my question to the Lord was, Lord, uh, how much of this in people's lives in my life that's going on in my life how much of this is just my flesh just my flesh reacting in a negative way how much is this how how much of this is my flesh and then lord if there is a spirit 
If there is a spirit, especially a spirit of heaviness, should I do what you did? Yeah. Praise Should I do what you did? You know what he did? He called them out. And see, we, we got this idea that when we talk about spirits, and especially if a preacher uses the word or anyone uses the word demon spirits, that we're talking about some gargoyle with wings that's possessed someone. You... See, Satan wants to blind you and I. Satan wants to blind the church. Not physically, but spiritually. He wants to spiritually blind. We can teach, Elizabeth and I, we're teaching right now on spiritual warfare. We're teaching on spiritual warfare. We're teaching about the armor, preaching about the armor. But nobody's fighting. Nobody's fighting. If, if the armor's there, what's up with this spirit of heaviness? I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, it's trying to speak to save people. But yet also, I'm, I want to reach an unbeliever that is willing to lend themselves to, to, to the Lord for, for the sake of being rescued. Don't we realize that if they were spirits being cast out or spirits being dealt with in a positive way in people's lives, we would have to have services 24 hours a day because the law would be out in the road directing traffic. The spirit of heaviness. I've done some research on the spirit of heaviness. Notice some words and phrases that I found concerning the spirit of heaviness. Orphan spirit. Abandonment, rejection, self-rejection, grief, grief, neglect, outcast, loneliness, Isolation, depression, unworthiness, despair, oppression, ridicule, anxiety, here it comes, panic attacks, bitterness, hurt, sadness, woundedness, wounded spirit, broken spirit, unforgiveness. I heard this today. I can't take credit for it, but I heard this today. When Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry, when he would confront a demon spirit or an unclean spirit, and we haven't even talked about the spirit There's a whole list. But we're talking about the spirit of heaviness. But when Jesus was dealing with these things, he did not speak to the person. Yeah. He spoke to the spirit. Amen. And it was almost like... A light went on. Maybe your neighbor, 
maybe your family member, maybe your wife, or maybe your husband, whoever it may be, they may not be the problem. It might be that spirit. Do you, did that, did that sink in? Somebody might say, well, how, how do you, would you describe a spirit? Well, just say, for instance, the spirit of jealousy. What does the spirit look like, the spirit of jealousy? If I was able to see it, well, preacher, tell me what it would look like. Jealousy. It's a spirit. It's a spirit of jealousy. It, it's not, it doesn't have wings or fangs. It's a spirit. And Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Why, Lord? Why was the Spirit of the Lord upon you while you were here walking for those 33 and a half years? Why? For the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me, hath anointed me with the Spirit, the Spirit of God. To preach deliverance unto the captives. To set at liberty them that are bound. To open up the prisons to those that are bound. Now, we can all get jacked up over that. And we can leave out and boy, it's a good message. But I tell you what, if you got problems in your family. And hey, I'm, I'm wondering about this thing. I'm wondering about... I'm wondering about this, this, this spirit of heaviness as this spirit of, of, of disappointment. Maybe, maybe someone has disappointed me and I'm, I'm, I ha they, they haven't lived up. They haven't lived up to my expectations. So I have a spirit that has gripped my life, the spirit of disappointment. So I am walking down around with this, this this spirit of disappointment. What about a spirit of rage? Huh? What does that look like? Don't you tell me that something's not going on in this society. And I also heard today that we, as the church, we are saying, <coughs> now don't get too carried away, preacher, with that demon stuff, or we'll have to fire you and get another one. Lord God. I was getting there. There is a spirit of religion. The Pharisees was eat up with it. Jesus Christ looked at the very elite of Israel and said, you are full of dead men's bones. You are whited sepulchers. In other words, you're painted white on the inside, but you're dead on the inside. Twice dead, plucked up. The spirit. And I began thinking about this, and 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 the scripture comes to my mind. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty. And we quote it, and we say it over and over and over, and we clap over it. But when are you going to say that's enough? Yes, yes, we need to do that. Something we're missing. You, you don't force yourself. You don't force, force you, 
You, you don't, the, the Spirit of God is a gentleman. Yes. I tell you what, he's a gentleman. <laughs> For lack of better words, he's a gentleman, but he's a bad dude. <laughs> and there ain't no place he won't go. There's no, hallelujah, there's no demon in hell that he won't confront. There's no spirit, this spirit of heaviness, this spirit that it seems to be, I don't know, it seems to be uh, keeping us into, in, in bondage. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Elizabeth and I was talking about this just the other day, to bind up the brokenhearted. What is the heart? What, what does it mean by the heart? The heart being the inner, the, 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 the innermost part, the center, the center of the emotions. Let me ask you a question. Does your emotions stay broken all the time? Are they broken on a continual basis? Is something on the inside of you that needs to be bound up because we as the church, I know, I know what some of you are thinking. Preacher, we just can't let it get too wild in here. I know what you're thinking. Don't let it get too out of hand in here. But the Holy Ghost of God will keep the foul spirits in check if they try to come in here. And I got enough respect for my Lord to know he can strike me dead right here, right now. My heart can explode right before him. He is no respecter of persons. He, my face means nothing to him. The only thing that means anything to him is his son that has lived and breathes and works in and through me. That makes me his son, his heir, his adopted one. There's more. Please don't take this wrong. Please, 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 please. Please. There's more to church than VBS, the choir, taking up the offering, homecoming fried chicken. I love it. I, and, and having a, a sermonette and, and a quick, 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 quick invitation because we got to get out of here. They're going to be in line. Preacher, they're, 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 we're not going to get in. They're closing at 3 o'clock for dinner. And our churches are crumbling. Crumbling. Whatever we're missing, whatever it is, and you're going you to show me because you've shown me too much. You've shown me too much. I for, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm not serving. I'm not serving the dead Jehovah of religion. I'm not serving the dead Jehovah of of some denominations. I'm not serving that one. They ain't have him. I'm serving the God that leadeth by fire. I'm serving a God that will lead by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of a cloud by day. Hallelujah, glory. Because the Lord God Almighty has anointed me He's anointed you. Yes. He's anointed. And the question is, are you walking in your anointing? What's that mean, preacher? Are, do you Number one, do you believe it? 
That's why most people don't walk in it because they don't believe it. Either they don't believe it or they're scared of it. That's another spirit. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. What does the spirit of fear look like, preacher? Does he have a black mask on and fangs and red blood going down his back? No. What's he look like? He looks like fear. Spirit of fear. I started to say this to Sunday, but it was Christmas and everything. Praise the Lord. The, he hath sent me to bind up. Sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. You know what? I was doing some word studies this afternoon to proclaim liberty to the captives. This means to release. Release. If you're captive, that's why he came. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you're captivated by. Right now, we're just dealing with the spirit of heaviness. But if we want to go on out a little fur further, let's, let's really get out into left field. How about the spirit of pharmakia? Huh? What's that? What's that, preacher? What's that? That's drug addiction. It's a spirit. And we do not war after the flesh. We war after the spirit. And it is the spirit of God. It's not my spirit, for though no good thing dwelleth in me. I am vile, as Job said, but the power of God that liveth and resteth in me. Oh. God's going to find the people. He's going to find them. He's done found them. They just don't know it yet. They don't know it yet. They, he, he's found the people that, 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 that will say, look, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but you've got a spirit of jealousy. You, you, and see, what, you, you've got a spirit of For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives and to set at liberty them that are. To set at liberty. There was another one. I, I, I just about started shouting in my office today while I was looking this up to proclaim liberty to the captives. And I was looking up all these Greek words uh, and these Hebrew words for these particular words because the word of God here, especially the Old Testament, was originally written in Hebrew. And to proclaim liberty to the captives in Hebrew means to allow to run. Run, run, no longer, no longer held captive by anything. No longer held captive by loneliness. No longer held captive by regret. No longer held captive by my past mistakes. No longer held captive. See, the Lord is the deliverer. He's not a man. But he's, it's not a man or a woman. He sure would like to use a man or a woman. He said, if you'll make yourself available. He said, what? Well, just put yourself, Jeff, just put yourself on the potter's wheel. Put yourself on the potter's wheel because I'm going to have to mold you. I'm going to 
I'm going to have to get some of them things, them old hard, dried up, calloused, especially some of that old religious bondage that's dried and caked on the side of your vessel. I'm going to have to break you once again, and I'm going to have to put you back on the potter's wheel so I can make you a vessel of honor, a vessel that I can use. vessel that I can use not for your glory but for his glory praise God praise the Lord well just the first verse or so and the opening and the opening of the prison to them that are bound the opening of that word means to liberate. Say, Miss Barbara, don't you know that old boy wants liberated? He didn't ask for it. And he sure ain't enjoying it. I know I've run out of time. But when a person... When a person gets to the place that they want to take their life and they see pointing a gun to the side of their head or putting a pistol in their mouth, that's got to be a spirit, the spirit of heaviness some shape or form a spirit that is so heavy it's so heavy brother Jeff it's so heavy preacher I've tried I've tried to come to church I went to Sunday school 27 Sundays in a row but the spirit of heaviness I just don't know what I'm going to do and if anybody ever says that if anybody ever says well I tried church that's the church's fault the church, there's some church folks going to have blood on their hands. You need to try harder, son. Just come on. Come on and sign up for the disciple class. We'll show you. We'll show you how to live. And we're going home fussing at our wives, fussing at our husbands, living like the devil, and we're going to go back and try to teach a discipleship class when we've got a spirit in our own life. Amen. See, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, before he can, before the Holy Ghost can start working on your wounds and my wounds, he's got to rip that old devil's Band-Aid off and expose it. Jesus would say, who are you? He knew. He knew. He knew who he was. Well, why did he ask him if he knew? Please, get you some spiritual glasses, please. Ask God to show you some things. He wasn't saying it for his benefit. He said it for ours. He said, who are you? He said, legion. For we are many. They recognized him. They recognized him. And they'll recognize him if you go face to face. Amen. They'll re they might not recognize you and you better hope they don't because they'll whoop you. But they'll recognize him. The Spirit of the Lord. I want our church to be thinking about this. I'm going to stop. I know I've run out of time. And we're going to finish this message. We're going to finish it at some point. God knows, God knows that people are dying. They're dying on the inside. Church, there's more spiritual, mental affirm infirmities that you and I can't see, that people are dealing with, that far outweighs the physical infirmities that we can see. 
And you saying, are you saying every one of us is demon possessed? No, no, that's not all. But he said he was going to give you the garment of praise and he wants to swap for the spirit of heaviness. And there's some things, and we're going to pray. And there's some things in all of our lives, every one of our lives. Probably that list, that little list, probably nailed every one of us in this room. One of them at least. Jesus said, that don't have to, that don't have to. You're, you, you might be locked up, but I got the key. You might be locked up in that, but I got the key. And I'm dying to open it. As a matter of fact, I died to open it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. We thank you, Lord, for what you're revealing to us. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would allow us, Lord, to walk in the authority. Lord, not building up ourselves, Lord, in our pride and our flesh, Lord, but building up ourselves and building up our most holy faith, praying, Lord God, in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray, Lord, that in the days ahead, Lord, that this church truly becomes a hospital for the broken, for the broken in spirit and the broken of heart and the broken and the heaviness and those that are captive. And Lord, please reveal your will for us. Lord, I know that it is your will that people, that people be delivered and people that, that the captives are set free. And Father God, I pray that you would forgive me, Lord, for all of the times, Lord, that I have quenched your spirit because worried about what somebody would say or what, what somebody might think or what they'd get on the telephone and call somebody and say what happened in church today. God, forgive me. Forgive me, O oh Lord. I do not want no blood on my hands. And Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you would deal with the hearts, Lord, here at this church and to give us the confidence to know that, Lord, you have defeated all spirits, any unclean spirit, anything that would exalt itself, anything that would exalt itself above the knowledge of, of the word of God, anything that would try to exalt itself, Lord, above you. Lord, we are your creation, Lord, created in Christ Jesus. It is no longer I, but you that lives in us. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll continue, Lord, to open these doors and you'll give Spirit of Life Church a true spirit of wisdom and a spirit of understanding. All of these things that the Spirit of God gives. And Lord, give us this spirit of power. Give us the spirit of love. Give us the spirit of a sound mind. Lord, give us those things, Lord, that Satan would try to rob from us and kill, steal, and destroy. Lord, let us, by the, the authority of the Holy Ghost of God, let us take back what the devil has stole from us. Lord God, do a work in this church and do a work in every church in this area, every church around the world. Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be soldiers of the cross. And, Lord, to keep our faith, Lord, fluidly, Lord, in you and your finished work. And not only to have faith, Lord, but put feet on our faith that we could walk in the authority of the death, burial, and resurrection of our risen Lord. Lord, bless, Lord, the people tonight. Lord, may they rest good. May they sleep good. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke any foul spirit that would rob somebody of their sleep tonight. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that foul spirit that would try to, to, to cause us to have anxiety to the fact that there's so many things running loose in our minds that we cannot sleep. Lord, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I'm expecting to sleep tonight like a baby. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Lord, bless us. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you so much. You're dismissed.